Right now we're going to look at um, blending colours together using coloured pencils. What we're doing when we're blending colours together is we're trying to create a transition from one colour to the next. And we create that by essentially making a mid colour. So that's a colour in the middle of those two colours that is a blend of the two. To do that we need to use harmonious colours. Those are the colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel and they work in harmony together. So they're very similar when considering their hue. So for this I'm going to use some blues and some greens and I might even get onto some yellow. And I'm going to start with my darkest colour first. And whenever you're using it on, like for example I'm doing an eye now, you want to use colour as a representation of tone. So that means where there's a dark colour you will add a dark so where there is a dark tone, you'll add a dark colour in. So I'm going to start here. And as with everything, our marks need to follow the contours of the form. So I'm just building my marks here. And you can see that every time I make a mark, so that I can get precision, I'm taking my pencil off the page. I'm not going backwards and forwards. I'm going all in one direction. And in this area, I need the colour to be really dark. And then as I want it to get a little bit lighter, and I, I'm going to start to transition into another colour. To make that transition, I need to stop pressing hard. I need to go lighter with this colour. And then I need to overlap with my next colour. So I'm just going to show you that now. But that's the sequence that we need to remember. Press hard, go lighter, overlap. So I've pressed hard, now I'm going to go lighter where I want to transition into my next colour, like so. And I'm just adjusting the pressure that I apply there, and then I need to overlap. So then I'm going to get my next darkest colour, and I'm going to overlap. And those, that lighter base and this darker base on top are going to work together now and they're going to blend together seamlessly. So that means that you can't see where one colour ends and another begins. And then I want to go lighter again. So I want to move on to a lighter blue. So I'm going to press hard, like so. And then I'm going to go lighter again. And then I'm going to overlap. And this is the mantle that you just want to keep in your head. Press hard, go lighter, overlap. That's the technique. And you can see that here, I've made quite a jump from that dark colour to this lighter colour, but as long as I'm pressing hard on the overlap, those two colours are going to mix together and we're going to get that seamless blend. I can continue doing this, but with most coloured pencils that you're going to get, you're not going to have like a really wide range, let's say, of um, blue tones and it might be that I want this section all blue so what I'm just going to do is I'm also going to utilize the uh, techniques that we were looking at earlier and I'm going to graduate from dark to light to start to represent where those lighter tones are I'm just adjusting my pressure following the contour keeping it nice and controlled and then that's going to get that representation in just there. You can see here, just there, I'm getting some of the bumps from the table, so it's always a good idea to rest on something, but that's easily adjustable. You can also see here, I'm not too happy with that seam there, let's call it, so I'm just going to press a little bit harder, get it a little bit more blended. And you can take that right down if you want, you can bring your darker colour back in, press a little bit harder with that, just get it nice and smooth. Like you're always aiming for the very best, so always review everything that you've done. Don't be afraid to go back to something, don't be afraid to correct it, because that's what's going to get you those high levels of achievement that we're aiming for. Now I'm coming back to this mid-blue here, because this area needs a dark tone. I'm just going to go in quite like a medium pressure with that to get that, and it's blending nicely because I'm thinking about that technique of overlapping and those colours just start to merge together really well and here I'm going to overlap but I'm just going to press lighter because I want this tone to be lighter and I'll still get elements of that blend there and the transition between those two will be really nice what I can do here if I want to so I could that would be a really good representation of form you can see where it goes lighter you can see where it goes darker I might make this a little bit more gradual, I might work on it for a little longer, but that's going to be a really good representation of form.
I'm going to return to my darkest colour here. And this is a really good way to think about it, about tone in general. Comparable. What are the darkest areas on my image? Because that's they're the only areas that I can use this colour for now. And this lid, along with this area here, is one of those. And I'm going to put that in. This part of the lid here is a lot lighter. And this part of the lid matches the tone that I can see over there. So I'm going to start to put that in. But I also want to introduce some of those green colours in. So I'm going to start with the lightest areas here. and following the curve round. And then I'm going to introduce some green by first of all putting it in a little darker here where I want it and then just bringing it in gradually really lightly overlapping like that and if I really like that effect I could also add hints of that in here and just overlapping and always thinking about your control and the pressure that you're applying and how those two colours are going to interact is going to really help you to get the effect that you want and then where I've put this green in I actually realised that actually that probably needs to be a little bit darker so I'm going to get a dark green and pull that in and it's just a constant state of review always going back, always looking and thinking about it what I'm going to do now is whilst you start this because you should be able to apply that technique to all areas of the eye I'm just going to finish this up for you so that then you've got a really good example of what we're aiming for the only thing that I haven't shown you is the eyebrow um, and that's very similar to when we've talked about making textures before. So we need to make sure that our marks follow the length and the movement of the line that we're looking at. But here we're also going to need a base layer. So if you think when you've got an eyebrow, you can often see through it. So the base skin layer I'm just going to put down is this really light blue. And it's often representative of the tone that's really closest to it. So it might be that I add a little bit of a gradient to that. So this part's a little bit darker. But you don't want it too dark because then your marks won't show up on it. And this is, it can just be done really roughly. Like so. And then all I'm going to do, probably need a really sharp pencil for this. So I'll take a black there. I'm just going to put those lines in like this and you can see that I'm quick I consider my mark before I put it on and I'm really looking at the picture which remember that's 80% of what we do look, look, look and I'm thinking about the direction that those marks go in and I'm just going to build the marks close together where it's darker and where it needs it and then I'm just going to move them further apart where I can see that there's lighter areas and the hairs are more sparse and that, if you just follow these techniques, that should be enough to see you through this task. You've got everything that you need there. Just one more time with that mantra. Press hard, go lighter, overlap. And remember, only colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel and that are harmonious will blend together. So please make sure you're considering that. I'm going to finish this up for you.